All right, uh, today is Wednesday. It's an amazing, beautiful day here in Maui, but every day has been that way. And I feel beautiful inside as well. And the Diana's doing her, are you, what are you doing? Building a butt? I'm building my butt. I'm building her butt. <laughs> Gotta get rid of this Asian butt syndrome, you know? <laughs> um, Daniel's, uh, I don't even know where Daniel's at right now. I think he, he's away, but I'm about to have breakfast and here's my breakfast. That's a piece of top sirloin and an egg. And there's just so much going on today. We got superhero training camp starting tomorrow. We got one person coming in from uh, Montreal, Canada. And then another girl coming in from Bend, Oregon. And we're looking for that third person. Uh, by the time you're seeing this video, it's probably too late. Maybe not. Um, but anyway, super excited about this day that we have ahead of us. There is just not enough. I love I love that I'm waking up earlier than I ever have and I still feel like there's not enough hours in the day. I feel blessed. That hasn't always been my reality. There's there used there used my real my old reality used to be how long can I sleep? Like I, I hopefully I can sleep till noon and then uh, how can I distract myself throughout the day so I don't like I don't know. Some kind of weird thing I did when I was in high school and stuff. All right, see you in a little bit. Um, and I just wanted, first of all, I just took a bite of this food and um, I think I got shivers how, how good it is. <laughs> um, and I wanna encourage y'all out there to, to say a blessing or pray before you eat. Just to take that moment before you start eating and just to acknowledge how amazing it is that we can eat such wonderful foods that nourish our bodies and the people that have spent so much time preparing them. Just to, I think it really connects you more to your food if you can take a few, even whether it be 10 seconds or a minute and just say a prayer of thank you and gratitude to for where this food came from, where who provided it. Um, so yeah, just wanna encourage y'all to do that if you don't already. And this is how I prepare my steak. That's the, it's like medium rare slash rare. So we're here at midday. Uh, it's about four o'clock. We're about to head out for a, either a surf or a workout. And uh, Daniel's doing some handstands, but if you can make sure, make sure to see that his toes are hitting the ceiling. I don't want you to think that he's doing that good of a handstand without the ceiling. <laughs> I got the vlog in my pocket, baby. Now it's in my hand. Um, and I was just gonna go on a little rant. I was like, oh, where's the vlog? Because we're analyzing Timothy's stokeness. Yeah, I was just saying uh, how stoked I am. I've served so many times and I'm still, not, if, if, not only do I have the same passion, but even more of a passion for surfing than I did when I first started. Um, and I was gonna say that, yeah, it's a great like guidebook to travel. And a lot of, I think, when you really get deep into life, there's a lot of people, especially if you study people like Einstein or quantum physics, that it comes down to this idea that, well, it's all energy. And I, it is, it's all energy. And how does energy come? It comes in waves. So, dedicating your life to connecting with that energy and the sweet spot of that energy, being in that flow state of that energy, being in the curl, the rip, curl, the tube, the barrel, the flow. What do they call it? The glide? And the, when it starts with Captain Zero? Is that the name of that book? Yeah, the glide. Um, the glide. It's, re it's really a good... Oh, whoa. <laughs> she almost just ran in front of her car. It's a good place to be. It's a really, I would say it's one of the sweet spots of, it's like maybe the most sweet energetic spot to be in. Yeah. And why would you not, if you're gonna do anything in life, why would you not make it a mission to be in the sweet spot of the waves of energy, since it's all energy, especially if you love water. And it's so parallel to life, like you're saying, because, you know, we're, I feel like as humans, what we, one of the things we want most is growth in our life. We want to see how far we can push ourselves until we've gone too far. And that's what a certain is like, how close can you get to that curl without getting smashed by it? Because like, 
think about like taking a regular nine to five job is kind of like surfing the inside, like the small mushy waves that, you know, not nothing too uh, dangerous is going to happen. But also in the same end, the reward is not going to be that great. But it's like there, it's like for entrepreneurs. If you're an entrepreneur out there, you know what I'm talking about. It's like let's let's go out and see if we can catch some bigger ones. And yeah, we might get hurt. We might our, we might get a, we might go broke. But at least that there's a potential for a huge reward. I'm not sure if I followed and agree with all of that, but yeah. I did like Timothy's passion about it. <laughs> Frank, Jay, <laughs> Frank Jay, did you uh, did you agree with me? I um, <laughs> I definitely heard what you were saying, and I imagine that a lot of those rewards come in life experience. And if what are we putting value to? Are we putting value to money? Or are we putting value to the quality of our life? We're both, you know. I think value is in many different ways, and so that's kind of what I gathered from it. Is that. You know, if you don't take the risk and go out there to play the game of life, like if you're watching life from the bleachers, mm -hmm. then you, there's a high potential that you won't get hurt and you will be nice and safe, but yet you might not get any value doing that. Or maybe just a little vicarious value of living through someone else. But if you go out in the game of life, there's a lot of chances that you could get hurt, but you could actually become alive and experience emotions and other things that you may not experience otherwise. Yeah, now I'm, I'm reminded of the idea of sports games and watching sports on mute. Have y'all ever done that? Have you ever seen fans in the stands on mute? Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's an indication of something to me. And <laughs> if it's all energy, if, if this is, is, if it's all energy, why not go for the sweetest spot of that energy rather than just watching it from a distance and projecting what you feel about that onto others and making your life dictated by how others perform in sports. Have you ever been to like a, um, <laughs> this is getting a lot more maybe triggering for some people. I went to uh, <laughs> the UGA UF game on Halloween in Jacksonville, Florida. And it was the strangest things because I was there, you know, my most of my friends were there to support UGA which is okay that's cool um but when they lost every a lot of people that made themselves in a bad mood they allowed themselves to get in a really bad and sad and sour and like down a lower vibration and i just have always been uh, fascinated by that idea and I, uh, my uh, encouragement to you is to make sure if you are projecting your dreams onto someone else or another sports team or another group of people or another organization they at least be aware that you're doing that because uh, awareness is the volume button of consciousness and if I was going to encourage you to do anything I would encourage you to actually become that person that you're projecting yourself onto um, and see what it's like because it's a lot of fun and I think surfing in a way is always convicting of that it's like wow we're no matter how, what the waves are like um, I get to determine what I think about the session. Yeah. So no matter what the waves of the energy of your life are like, you are the one that determines if it was a good or bad session. Yeah, I'd like to say something to that, to the thousand people that you're holding in your hand then. Um, millions. Millions. First of all, I would like to ask you, I, lo I love questioning Daniel because he's always you know, uh, teaching so much, teaching so much to me, but when you said other people are getting triggered, were you possibly getting triggered yourself of the, the idea that you might be triggering other people? And secondly, I'd like to share my favorite quote with you guys. That a loser is not someone who comes in second or third place. A loser is someone that who's so afraid to fail that they don't even try. I love that quote. It's my favorite. And on that, I'll have two things to say. Number one, that I don't believe in getting triggered, just elevated. And number two, uh, <laughs> I've also recently heard that successful people fail a, ho a whole lot more than unsuccessful people do. <laughs> That's true. It's just the ability to see failure as one step closer to what you're going for. One more growth opportunity, one more, you're paying the price of success, baby. I would like to say something. <laughs> now we're on. That definitely, I knew that was going to elevate Frank Jay. We start talking about stuff like that. That's Frank Jay's topics. This is such a, a simple thing that we hear so much. But how many times do you need to hear it to start taking action? 
because you'll start to realize while you're on this journey of success and whatever you define success as that you're gonna realize that all these simple truths it's such cliche truths like there's no such thing as failure or there's failure but it's one step closer to success like people are gonna hear this from every motivational speaker and author and person that has had the courage to go on this journey you're gonna hear it again until you start to experience it yourself so how many times do you need to watch a video until you start to take action and so that'd be my challenge to you today is to start to take action and play the game of life. I would I would say for you, Frank J, the only person that can answer that question is the person you're asking it to. <laughs> That's individual answers just like what's the what is success? It's what you make it. What is life? It's what you make it. At the same time that you unsubscribe from the Rob Ross channel and subscribe to your own channel. <laughs> so you know you're headed in the right direction. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know how, you don't necessarily have to unsubscribe. I'm not necessarily promoting that, but I will promote that one of the I think the greatest kind of Heart like elevating compliment I've ever received was when someone told me that oh I, um, I mean I've stopped watching y'all's videos I started you know that's what you told me to do you started telling me to create my own like and then you don't even have to video it just realize that you are in the video that you are in the movie of your life and that you're the producer director main actor peace and peace be with you and I believe God is actually the set the scene and the energy behind it all and if you're one of those out there that are like I want to say something to you guys like I want to be in the van I want to contribute what my gift is to you guys I would say well a if you're single and you're Christian <laughs> to come on the single and Christian retreat in Costa Rica March 19th through the 23rd email me robbrows at gmail.com or singleandchristian.net and if you want to join us for an adventure that's a little bit less uh, parameters, join us at Byron Bay <laughs> for International Drive Design. Hey, I love parameters. If I, if I wasn't able to consider what Timothy was doing, then how the heck am I supposed to imagine he's going to consider what I'm doing and vice versa? And I'm, I consider myself as a Christian as well. I, just, I, have, I think I have a bit of a knack for hanging around people that I disagree with because I love uh, the growth that comes from agreeing to disagree and figuring out the uh, golden carrot on the other side of that door of disagreement facing your fears. So, <laughs> yes, if you're interested in Byron Bay, email us at apply at internationaltribedesign.com and ask us for more info and I may reach out to you personally and have that conversation with you. And so, yeah. It's fun to have personal conversations with Frank J. To upgrade the level of communication from video to phone to video, call to in person. Yeah, and if you want to just be involved uh, from behind the computer screens, leave some comments below and let us know. Let us know what you're feeling. Let us know what comes up as you watch these videos. Let, let us know what you want to do next with us through this video because you can pretend you're here with us too. <laughs> and your imagination is where creation begins. If you can believe it, then you can see it and see this. Daniel. <gasps> What just happened to you, brother? Uh, check out the board. Oh, my rental board that I put a $300 deposit on. With a GoPro that's about $600 of equipment. Uh, so that tells you part of the story, but we piled out um, by ourselves, suspiciously enough. And I'll admit, it was a I felt a little against I just have a rule out in Hawaii that I realize people have served here their whole lives and when no one else is out, <laughs> maybe it's a good idea to second guess if you're going to paddle out. Timothy was stoked about it and I, and I was like, yeah, let's do it, let's push, you know, maybe we just got fortunate and we're the only ones out and everyone didn't think it was going to be that good. Uh, so we made it out, made it out, went for a few waves that looked scary, but doable. And then two waves, two or three, a set wave came. I would say way double overhead. There's a little, I like got a little tattoo from it. Way double overhead. Um, and I look back and my board's broken. And the current, this is the strongest I've seen the current here in this spot, sweeping towards the rocks a bit. <coughs> and sure enough, I was stuck. And I'm not stuck, but I was in the, one of the most suspect spots you could be in without a board. And especially with a half a board. So I'm like, I'm getting, I told Timothy like, my board's broken. I'm gonna let go of this other half of this board. I need help getting in. <laughs> and in the meantime, I was breathing in a lot of whales. Oh, wow. I, we were close to this. Yeah. I was breathing in a lot of foam. 
and getting tossed around a lot. And even considering in my mind that like I might have to figure out a way to screw. I was having a game plan in my mind that if I get dragged towards the rocks, I'm gonna have to be very mindful to do it in a safe way to stay like to get out of the state of panic because I was a bit panicky. But sure enough, Timothy came and uh, I just told him I'll respect him forever because it looked like he was as concerned with my life as his own. And uh, I kind of tried to hold on to him and we kept getting hit at one wave after another, after another, after another, kind of holding on um, until Timothy said, no, I'm on the reef, we're on the reef. And I let go and swam. And everyone on the Whales. beach was waiting for us, huh? <laughs> Whales. <laughs> everyone was on the beach, like, waiting for us, clapping, asking if we were okay, telling us where the board with the GoPro was. And then someone, I asked someone, I was like, I've breathed a lot of foam. Uh, uh, is anyone, you know, is anything to be uh, concerned about or watch out for? And someone, you know, but the seeds of fear are always there to be harvested if you want to. And someone told me about a secondary drowning thing. I think I'm pretty conscious in a normal state. I'm a little still amplified. Um, but I'm just really fortunate and blessed uh, to come away with that, with just a broken board and a uh, enlivened spirit and a little cool cut on my right bicep. And Timothy is a brother. It's a real brother. It's a real. That was a that was some, a moment of unconditional love for sure. Because I know, um, <clears throat> I imagine some people in that state might have just paddled in. They might have gotten a little scared themselves. Too scared. They might have gotten too scared to uh, help me out actually. So part of me wants to cry a little bit out of, out of uh, <laughs> gratitude actually. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I'm really happy. I'm really happy. I'm, uh, I'm really happy. I'm okay, but I'm really happy. Timothy uh, was like just waiting there for me the whole time. So thank you. Yeah. yeah I didn't know say what just happened. <laughs> I just say that uh, I knew it was going to be a special session because it was just Daniel and I out there. And I remember right before this all happened, right before we got hit by that wave. I told Daniel, I was like, yeah, it's just you and I and God out here. Yes, praise God. And um, I felt very comforted and I felt very, like, I, even though some crazy stuff happened, like, I feel like God was with us out there and we got humbled for sure. Oh, I think this is, uh, it was God for sure. I know a lot of people said, oh, you're so lucky and they were, they were thanking me for the luck and there's Frank J. Uh, but I think what they meant by luck that I meant, I think is God. So thank God, it was a really humbling experience during Super the day before Superhero Training Camp. So wow, uh, I think it was been a, a real good context camp. creator. Man, Yo, <laughs> board, what happened? <laughs> There's whales out there. Oh wow! We just told the story, but man, I almost. You, I mean, you next good? level, uh. next level stuff. Timothy literally like was a lifeguard. I had to like ditch my. <laughs> You are really interesting about this topic. Check out Timothy's bedtime snack he inspired me to do. And then I was going to make a little blog and I am just got I just know I just observed myself getting a bit insecure that the lighting might not be ideal right now. Um and how I look in it. But um basically Timothy, do you want to hear this? This was in response to something Timothy and I were talking about. And it brought up a topic that I thought was worth mentioning in the blog because I imagine it's going to be a little deep. Uh, <laughs> but that honesty, like when you take it honesty to a really deep level, and I've heard all kinds of arguments for um, why it's not best to be honest. Like I've heard some really good ones. Let's put it this way. How many people try to convince you of times when it's not, like, the reasons not to be 100% honest. Is that a common thing for you? Oh, it's so, so, somewhat common. Oh, yeah? Oh, I get I get a lot of uh, feedback on how, like, people quite, or in the past I did. Be careful about what I say in the present tense. In the past, I've gotten a lot of feedback of when people shouldn't be 100% honest. Uh, like, people, like, want to tell me about that in the past. Right. And I'm usually most of the excuses I hear just sound more like 
they, you know, it's mostly projection like my grandma or they wouldn't be able to handle this because of that. They wouldn't be able to handle this because of that. And um, in reality, I think that what they mean by that is they just can't handle themselves when this person is going to react the way they imagine. Um, but there is one level of honesty that I sometimes question is when you have a deep wisdom and knowing or trusting, like this is something you're ultra faithful about, is true, but the other person is maybe in denial about it. It's like obviously in denial, maybe not only to you, but to someone else. And um, when you share the, tr when someone shares that truth to them and they, and the, you know they're so in denial that they're gonna build more resistance against your story. Uh -huh. So you're almost inviting them. It's almost in a way because the person's at a certain level of understanding or belief or functioning or consciousness, however you want to describe that. Uh -huh. It's pretty certain that they're going to build even a bigger case against themselves, uh -huh. like against a tr against a story that's hurting themselves. It's yeah. not even true. Um, and that's the weird thing. Sometimes I wonder. I'm like, man, if I tell, if I bring this up right now, they're going to get really. They they could. They could, and, and this is once again. I'm just. I'm not promoting this, but I've caught myself doing this. That I imagine they could get quite defensive, and it's almost they'll start building up more reasons for them to keep sabotaging themselves. Um, well, I know what you mean. And that's to be to, to be honest or not to be honest. I say to be. I say still be honest. Still be honest. But I I know the. The, I know I can empathize with you if you're there. Yeah, I think that's when uh, a level of discernment takes place where you, when you're having a conversation with someone, are, are two people trying to prove themselves right or are they trying to find the truth in the matter? And they're willing to find the, tr the truth um, even if it means feelings, like, even if it means a lot of emotions coming up I and mean, being like a lot of stuff coming to the surface. Are they trying to find the truth or are they just trying to prove themselves right? <laughs> Were you concerned about how much hand milk I was using? No. Oh, cool. You looked down at it and looked, looked deep in thought. Uh, and you, did you, where did you come up with that from, that saying that you just said? Is that something you've just felt like you figured out throughout your own wisdom, or did you hear someone else say that? No, when I said it the other night, I was wondering um, if I had heard, I don't think I've ever heard anyone else say that. And I, I think I, it came to me. You know, I think the very next day, something I do, and I'll give you one of the ultimate life hacks, it'll probably be in my book. Up and coming advertisement. That was my commercial. Um, is that I get massages? I and mean, when I get massages, I'll get I'll be listening to an audiobook, and I was listening to an audio because I think it gets like the message gets meditated into your unconscious. It goes into your muscles, it, like it becomes part of your being. So you don't even have to study that much. It just like becomes part of you. It's like a brainwashing in a way. Especially if you maybe use herbs or whatever else to get extra relaxed, extra like absorptive. That's just a theory that I'm trying out, um, and I believe it's having great results. But Brian Tracy, I was listening to a book, Brian Tracy Goals, and he said the same thing almost. Really? The same, like the same. I couldn't even believe it. I was like, "Are we? Is this guy really repeating the same thing Timothy said last night?" Wow. And I don't think that was the, thing, the first time I've ever heard it put both that way, like those ways, in two nights in a row. And I think it's all that's ultimate wisdom right there. Whew. When you're seeking the truth rather than being affirmed, man, that's a humbling experience sometimes. Yeah. To seek the truth rather than affirmation. All right. You want to say anything else? Good night. Oh no, I did want to say one thing. Thank God for just that, just that, just that. And uh, I'm gonna. Timothy and I are both a bit. I think we were analyzing this. This could be interesting for you guys too. That. In a bit of a state of like ultra feeling ultra courageous and feeling ultra humbled like almost on the like tomorrow if i go surfing and when i be extra paranoid and we're going to be extra courageous which reminds me of what life is all about and that's choices and you always have a choice with everything you do so i'll choose to continue in the path of courage because I believe that's this, that is a spirit of our creator. And remember this guy that, we, that you just saw in the vlog? This guy right here? Um, after my phone died and everything, uh, he was basically was telling us that he wanted to become a Christian. And I was like, what does that mean to you? He said, I want to become baptized. I was like, what does that mean to you? And it turns out that tonight he asked, uh, he prayed a prayer with me. 
asking Jesus to be his Lord and Savior, and he repented of his sins, and uh, it was a beautiful thing. So praise God for that. And we're planning on meeting at church on Sunday. Wasn't that, not only was that guy like the most ultimate optimistic, positive guy, I may, could, he may even compete with me. That whole experience was so divine. What about, remember you were telling me, you want to share that part, how that guy popped up to serenade you asking, like your whole ceremony that you were doing with him had that nice background music while a girl walked up named Eden. It was like the Garden of Eden. <laughs> After the whole superhero synchronicity and wow. Do you want to share that one detail? Because like, I thought that was pretty crazy. Uh, I, I don't even know what exactly you're talking about. But I just know that uh, it seems like since I've been out here in Hawaii, the Holy Spirit has really been working harder. I don't know if I've just become more sensitive to the Holy Spirit or if the Holy Spirit is just doing it's the, the doing the thing, man. But uh, it's been really crazy. Really crazy. I'm talking about the guy that you saw a musician and you said how this guy channels the will of God. Divine will. Yeah. Or divine will. He channels. And like he said, some people talk about it and some people actually do it. Somebody was telling me a story about this guy. And then, in the middle of our conversation, right when we're about to leave, Timothy's like, that's the guy. And I thought this was the guy, Timothy was telling me another story, how he picked up like a homeless vagrant man, potentially, that was maybe like violent or something. But he was sitting there like, that guy does not look like he would be violent. I'm like, you're going to involve Gal and you, man. Um, <laughs> Like, that guy does not look violent, but it was the divine guy. And he divinely played some awesome background music in the presence of Eden, Timothy, and I, and Keith. Keith, uh, In Jesus' name. Yeah, who was a Buddhist, Jew-ish person, and now he wanted to, tonight he he accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Praise God. Yeah.